Jesus, man. Smoking big joint. Rainbow Six Parasite, <coughs> fuck, I mean quarantine, <coughs> fuck, I mean extraction, is a three player tactical first person co-op shooter where you play as characters from everyone's favorite CSGO knockoff, Rainbow Six Siege, to fight aliens. You know, the ones that come from outer space and shit. So a few years back in Siege's Operation Chimera update, someone at Ubisoft said, hey, what if we made a game mode where you shoot alien zombies, patent pending, instead of other counter-terrorists, and then they made the Outbreak event. Since this event garnered a positive reception, Ubisoft approved a full game based on its concept, and here we are. So, Extraction, is it good? Well, you'd think Ubisoft, a company that practically prides itself on mediocrity at this point, would fumble at a co-op shooter, especially one based on a very infamous title, but... No. There's a clear sense of design and cohesiveness to be found in Extraction, something that is becoming rare nowadays. There's inevitably going to be some comparisons between Extraction and its cousin Siege, which makes absolutely no sense since they are different genres, but here, let me just get it out of the way. Number 1. No Friendly Fire. I can shoot without having to worry about idiots wanting a back scratch from my bullet. Also, they look like those car dealership balloons when you shoot them in the head, which is very funny, haha. <laughs> Reason number 2. Bullets behave like bullets. I guess it has something to do with the game being PvE rather than PvP, but it feels like every bullet hits its mark. Even if they don't, it doesn't matter since gunfights aren't literal milliseconds long where one bullet can decide your fate. Reason number 3. Shotguns and DMRs aren't worthless pieces of ass play. Since not every enemy dies to a single headshot, fire rate no longer becomes the only important stat. Additionally, shotguns stagger enemies if you hit them with enough pellets so you don't get fucked over in melee range. Oh, bad Reason for Extraction realized player ping should be color coded and not number coded. Whoever decided number coded was the way to go in Siege really didn't understand math because that was a big miscalculation. And reason number five, it's not Rainbow Six Siege. Pretty self-explanatory, that one. Okay, let's like actually talk about the game now. So first off, you got two different progression systems going, React Progression and Operator Advancement. React Progression is based on any XP you obtain regardless of your operator. This lets you unlock grenades and explosives like flashbangs, scan mines, a claymore, and another claymore. Then you've got Operator Advancement. When you get XP with an operator, it will go to them and only them, no sharing. Unlocking upgrades like faster movement, damage reduction, and other good stuff. The most important upgrades are for their gadgets. If you've played Siege, you should recognize these gadgets. If not, well, pff, okay. Basically, each operator gets their own unique ability that separates them from everyone else. Sledge gets a hammer, Capitao gets a crossbow, Lion gets... You get the idea. The gadgets actually translate very well to a PvE environment, so you don't have to worry about operators not being viable. Even niche operators like Fuse and Tachanka, before his rework, still have their uses in certain situations and objectives. Regarding those objectives, there's a lot of them. In Biopsy, you shank a bitch. Hunt, you bait an elite by killing their shit teammates. Rescue, you save some poor sod who somehow didn't get the memo to evacuate. Ah! And in Gateway, you kill an imposter. You've also got missions like Serial Scan, where you defend control points, and Triangulation, where you find and activate three computers in a given order. Oh, right, I should explain how a mission works. Missions in Extraction, known as Incursions, begin by assigning you three random objectives. After picking your operator and gear, you're shat out into the first of three subzones. Each subzone has an objective to complete, after which you head to an airlock to do the next. You're given the option to extract at any point in the mission, so if you can't handle the heat, you can just bail. It's pretty refreshing to have this level of freedom in a co-op shooter. 
here. It's nothing too deep, but I think having a get the fuck out button is really nice. If things get dicey way too early or someone has a drug deal to be at, you know, not judging, you aren't forced to stay. And the objectives themselves have enough variety to keep the game fresh, consistently encouraging you to adjust both your playstyle and loadout. Some force you to a guns blazing situation while others call for a quieter approach. Further encouraging this variety are mutations. Most of them add genuinely interesting and fair twists, like cloaked Archeans, where unalerted enemies are almost completely invisible. Then you have fog. The Immortal Smasher mutation is in my opinion the most ominous one. You got one of these big fuckers that chases you around the whole time. Jeez, it's like if someone got Big Smoke's order wrong and he's looking for the manager. But what about the normal smasher? And the rest of the enemies for that matter? They're actually pretty good. Hey. The most praiseworthy aspect about Extraction's enemies is that they are diverse. In gameplay, I mean. Visually, no. A couple of highlights being the Spiker, Smasher, and Apex. Unlike other games, piddly excuse for shooter enemies, Spikers are legitimately terrifying if not dealt with. They stand in one spot, cover their face with their hand face shield thing, and lay down suppressing fire in the last place they saw you. These enemies are fantastic because they force you to adapt to what they are doing. It's almost like you're in a gunfight in Siege. Hypothetically, of course, we're assuming the bullets actually register here. You can wait for them to stop firing and kill them yourself. You can have a teammate flank and one tap them. You can use certain gear to create an opening, or you can shoot their head before they even have a chance to lock onto you and stagger them. And you think these guys are scary? Oh, wait till you meet their cousin, the Storm Spiker. If normal spikers are glass cannons, these guys are fucking glass rail guns. They fire one big semi-homing projectile that chunks you so goddamn hard. Remember how Rigby lost a butt cheek because he lost a game of punchies to skips? Yeah, that's what'll happen to you. Operator is MIA. The Smasher, which I imagine to be the cursed child of Black Panther and the Hulk, is one of the best enemies in the game. He punches, crunches, and, uh, uh, runches. What I love about him is how he encourages team play. Usually it'll involve one player distracting him while another comes up and gives him the old spy treatment. Sure, most of the time you can just vomit out a grenade or whip out your primary gadget and just kill him yourself, but sometimes it's nice to have some help. Trust me, on occasion they'll wedge themselves in a tight space and you'll discover the true meaning of doors stuck. Doors stuck, please, I beg you. And then, straight out of Doom Eternal, comes the one, the only, the Archive! the apex they have the largest health pool out of the normal enemy roster so y'all need to coordinate some shit if you want them gone in a timely fashion their main ability is to spawn low tier enemies but they also shoot projectiles that blind you and prevent you from aiming down sights not sure how being blind makes your gun suddenly too heavy to lift a couple measly inches but i'm not one to question alien orgasm balls also they're the only enemy that cannot be killed with a takedown so don't try any fancy csgo knife tricks with them unless you want to get knocked on your ass like the naughty boy you are. No. An interesting thing, actually two interesting things, about Extraction's enemies is that A, you never fight more than 15 enemies at a time, and B, you only encounter a few enemy types in each subzone. This means that every individual enemy is a threat on its own, but the game never overwhelms you with sheer numbers or variety. Even on low difficulties, grunts alone can knock your health down a couple pegs if you're not careful. And that's what makes combat in this game exhilarating and satisfying. Each time you deport an enemy back to the reddit hive mine they were birthed out of, it feels like a minor victory. Additionally, there are a couple of hazards. Literally, a couple. There are only two. Sludges and blinding spores. Sludges aren't all that bad, unless you get their mutation, then you're gonna be checking the floor like a paranoid janitor. Now, blinding spores are annoying in the sense that stepping on duplo blocks can be annoying. Not that painful, but can still ruin your day. Jokes aside, they're a neat little hazard that makes you play a bit slower. I like that they only glow if you are near them so they aren't given away at a distance. A couple pats on the back from a teammate will get them off you. If they even fucking bother. Help! I require assistance! Uh, hello? Ah! <laughs> Certain gadgets can also destroy them, such as paralysis grenades and smokes canisters. That's something I want to give extraction points for, the versatility of its utility. 
Many co-op games have grenades and other utility, but they end up being nothing more than mild suggestions. Looking at you, Payday. While many gadgets are ultimately there for alien murder, there are multiple ways they can be used to achieve said goal. Nomad's air jabs, for example, when upgraded, can literally evaporate various enemy types, such as the Explody Boys and Rooters. You can chuck them down the front line to deal with immediate threats, or shove them in flank routes so you don't get jump scared. A neat use I've found for them is placing them on reinforced walls, so if a breacher gets any funny ideas about blowing them up, they'll realize how funny of an idea it really is. Another fairly versatile gadget would be scan grenades. During loud scenarios, you can toss them out like candy on Halloween night to give your team wall hacks, but they can also be used in stealth to scout ahead. I largely take them for missions with the cloaked Archean mutation. Being able to see which direction enemies are facing is almost a necessity in stealth. Invisibility kind of fucks with that. Scan grenades alleviate that, especially since they don't alert enemies when thrown. Operator gadgets also fit very well into extraction with varying levels of versatility and strength. Vigil can give your team AoE invisibility, which has its uses in both stealth and loud. Zofia has CC up the fucking ass, making higher tier enemies easier to deal with. Doc is resident healer, you get the idea. What I think is so great about utility in this game is that you are constantly encouraged to be using it, which really does add to the tactical nature of the game as much of a buzzword that seems to be nowadays for game companies. You will genuinely have a difficult time playing extraction if you aren't making use of your grenades and gadgets. The game called on you to make the most of every part of your loadout, and that is something I must applaud Extraction for nailing. You know, I've brought up stealth a lot, maybe I should actually fucking talk about it. Now, Ubisoft games are not known for their revolutionary stealth mechanics. What's that? And while Extraction is no game changer, it certainly is a step up from the typical mediocre stealth. It's as good as it needs to be. Enemies roam around randomly for the most part, but sometimes they'll be loitering around nests. Since you'll want to be killing as many nests as you can while things are still quiet, having enemies guard them means players will have to adapt accordingly. In terms of actually killing them, takedowns are always viable as long as it's clear. Though most enemies can be popped with a single silenced bullet in their weak point. If there are too many enemies, or enemies in unfavorable positions, you might need some help from your boys, or girls, to coordinate multiple takedowns. Grenades and various gadgets of course can be utilized, but be careful as while enemies won't be alerted until they see you, a majority of them will make enemies sus of where the noise came from. This leads to the different states they can be in. By default, enemies are passive where they wander around peacefully, as peaceful as weird bacteria aliens can be. Then they can enter hunting, where they move a bit more aggressively, actively seeking players. Lastly, there's alert where they go FULL SICKO MODE! Minor fuckups won't completely screw you over, but preserving stealth becomes much less of a cakewalk due to that hunting state, especially if there's a chain reaction that results in a nationwide manhunt for your team. Apexes shake up stealth due to their immunity from takedowns and their fucking ass load of health. Everyone bursting it down at once is the most common strat, but damage focused gear like nitro cells and fuses cluster charges are also great options, particularly if you're playing solo. If an enemy spots you, they'll attempt to howl alerting nearby e-boys as to where your dumb ass is. Since enemies open themselves up for a takedown when they do this, it can be a good idea to go for it if the situation permits it. Sometimes I like to purposely bait enemies into going for a howl to get an easy takedown. This is a especially good for smashers as they are by far the hardest enemy to quietly take care of. Despite being as big as a rock, they definitely aren't as dumb as one. I swear, they have better awareness than siege players. Huh? As for loud, maintaining control of the situation is key. And no, I'm not just reading that off the React Manifesto. When you lose control, you will know it. When the mission goes south, which depending on your teammates could be inevitable, weak point kills will be important but not just for faster kills. Enemies not killed via their weak point will leave sprawl on the ground, which can slowly cover entire areas in lengthier fights. And since sprawl both slows you and empowers enemies, you're gonna wanna be aiming at head level. Coordinating with your team will be paramount in many cases, whether it be to hold an area, move to a new location, or focus down a target. This coordination becomes especially important in the game's ranked mode, Maelstrom Protocol. When I say ranked mode, it really isn't a conventional ranked mode. You aren't competing against other players to prove who is more of a virgin. 
rather it is just a very lengthy incursion. Instead of your typical three subzones, there are nine, each with a different mutation, as opposed to one mutation for an entire incursion. Your rank is determined by how much XP you earn. Some resources, namely medkits and react tech, become scarcer as you progress, with only the first three subzones having medkits. While on the topic of medkits, I really like that the game uses a temporary health system. Expendable health encourages players to play a bit more aggressively, but still reminds them that you don't want to be taking too much damage. Also, tiny bits of damage don't leave that bitter taste in your mouth because you were going to lose that health within the next minute anyway. The game vomits ammo at you, as well as ability refills. Not that you'll need them. In my opinion, loading all the medkits early on is weird because you can end up not needing them until later so they should be more evenly distributed, but that's just me. Because of the competitive nature, everything, and I mean everything in the incursion, stays the exact same. The order of objectives, placement of enemies, nests, hazards, all of it. The literal only difference is how enemies roam around the map. This allows players to plan and strategize specifically how they want to go about completing the run. You only have a week to do this though, because every week a new incursion replaces the old one in Maelstrom. So bottom line, I think Rainbow Six Extraction is, as kids in the 20s would say, the bee's knees. The entire game feels like it was developed with every mechanic in mind. Nothing feels out of place. Cohesive is the best way I could describe the game. Everything flows and meshes smoothly. Progression systems give players a reason to invest more time into the game when they start playing. Incursions have a unique structure that separates them from other games' mission types. Enemies are diverse and complex enough without overwhelming you, and operator gadgets and utility are legitimately important for success while also allowing for variety in what you decide to bring. Now, don't get me wrong. Extraction is not the second coming of Christ for gaming by any means. There are still spots of Ubisoft syndrome seeping through. But even though it reuses assets, mechanics, characters, etc., that doesn't ruin the entertainment it still brings. I think it's really unfair to write Extraction off as nothing more than an asset flip of seeds just because it has the same characters and reused, like, fucking toolboxes from house or something. The developers still had to create enemies with their own AI and models, design new maps, which are vastly different from how siege maps are made by the way and create an intelligent and logical game director that wouldn't just fuck you over in the large number of ways it could unlike a certain other games ai generated levels and it's not like they just released the game and then left it to die they are still adding in new stuff as well as running new events it's a welcome breath of fresh air in the co-op shooter genre especially after shit like back for blood and gtfo ended up being utter fucking trash fires that's my spiel on rainbow six extraction as always leave any thoughts you have in the comments and video end